Hello all, in this particular tutorial, I'll talk about how to set up Oracle 90C Data Guard using OEM. There are many advantages of using OEM and if you use OEM to set up the Data Guard, the setting of the Data Guard is really, really easy. You don't need to worry about the internals of the Data Guard parameters that you need to set for the the data guard to work the oem is going to do its magic and it's going to set up the data guard for you so we don't we don't need to manually restore the database the standby database we do not need to set up the data guard parameters such as digconfig fail client fail server we do not need to start the mrp process manually because oem takes care of it Switchover can be done using OEM. So if we want to do the switchover, the switchover can be done using OEM. No need to add standby redo logs. OEM will add them. No need to configure listener.ora, tnsnames.ora. No need to configure the data guard broker. OEM will configure it. And no need to configure the force logging. So you can see that the amount of work that we need to set up the data guard is almost half or even less than half you just create the primary convert the primary into archive log mode and allow the oem to do its magic and oem can will do everything for you i mean the setting up of the data guard is really really easy if you use oem now the steps involved these are the high level steps you will create the primary database using dbc or any other method that you want to create your database you will change your database unique name if you want to keep the same database name unique name that's fine but normally you will keep it uh, different convert the database to archive log mode that's mandatory the oem will not allow you to set up the standby if your primary is not in the archive log mode so that's something that you have to do manually once that is done you can deploy OEM agent on both primary and standby server then you will discover the oracle home in OEM on both primary and standby you will add the standby database via OEM you will perform some kind of testing to verify that data guard is working and finally we will do the switch over using the OEM now the this is how you will be doing it so first you will create the primary database then you will change the primary database unique name then you will set up the primary database in archive log mode you will unlock the db snmp user for the oem this is only required because oem needs to connect to your database and needs to monitor your database so you'll unlock the db snmp user you will start listener on both the nodes you will deploy oem agent on both host servers you will discover the oracle home in oem and you will add standby database using oem so these these are so basically you will just create on the standby all that you have to do is deploy the oem agent discover the oracle home and then oem does everything for you this is how my configuration looks like my database name will be aura instance name will be exactly same as my database name unique name in on my primary will be aura p on my standby it will be aura s host name that i'm be using is db1 and db2 only thing that i have done as of now is i have got the oem configured and i have got the two machines already the oracle binaries installed there is no database on any of these two machines only the listener is running if it is not running i'll start it so only listener is configured there is no database at all only the oracle home is installed and my oem server is up and running that's all is been done so let's let's stop this ppt and let's start with our session so if i go to the first server this is the db1 and if i go to second server this is the db2 let me put it side by side let me clear this this is oracle 7 oracle 7.8 sorry this is reddit if i show you the host name this is reddit 7.8 and i'll be performing this tutorial on oracle 19c if i show you ps minus ef grep pmon you can see that there is absolutely no database even i can show you cat etc or tab 
and you will be able to see that it's empty. So I do not have any database on primary. Neither I have any database on the standby. I can just run this two steps for you on the standby. And you can see the pmon, there is no pmon process. And if I run cat etc or our tab, you should be able to see that it is empty on the second node as well. So it's empty. There is no database on primary and standby. Now, what, what we will be doing is we will create some directories for the o for the Oracle. So we'll create some directories a dump. The second directory is the for the Oracle data files. The third directory is for the FRA and fourth directory is for the OEM. This is where I will deploy my OEM agent. I'll repeat the same steps on the standby as well. So I've created the directories on both the primary and standby. What I'll also do is I will make sure my listener is started. And before starting the listener, let me let me show you how my listener looks like. So let me go to the the location Oracle Home Network Admin and I'll show you how my listener looks like on the primary. So let me clear this. Let me clear this and I'll show you how my listener looks like. So if I go to this particular directory and if I go to this particular directory here and if I say cat listener.ora you can see that I got a listener called v19 with a port of 1529. Again you can use the port as per your organization standards or as per your wish 1521, 1522, 1523. The default port is 1521. You can definitely use 1521 or you can use any other port. Most of the organization don't use the 1521, the default port, because it the it's the security standard allow does not allow you to use 1521. So normally they use a different port. So in my case, I'm using 1529. And exactly same, the listener file will exactly look same on both the host the primary and second host it's exactly same so except for the on the host one it is db1 db com here it is db2 and i'm using the same port for both the primary and standby now if i if i show you the cat tns names dot aura file you will be able to see that i do not have any file so i'm not i'm not configuring any TNS entries, there is no file. The TNS names.ora file does not exist on the primary. It does not exist on the standby. So I have only the listener configuration. All good. Now we are ready to create our database. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cle clear, create my database using the DBCA. So let's do that. To cre clear, create the database, I'll use the, I can log into the server because this is this is my the, the all the boxes are running on my local but i'll just do it using the using the xming so i'm setting the display variable clear and i'll say dbca which will launch the which okay looks like there is some issue with my let's see what's okay so i made a mistake the IP address was incorrect. So let's do that once again. And this time it's launched the DBCA. We'll say create a database. And then we will choose the advanced configuration. Click on next. Single instance database. Click on next. Container. We do not need. Give the name as per your choice. I'm using Aura. Again, it's your choice. Whatever you want to use. Click on next. Use if you want to use ASM, you can use ASM. If you want to use it on file system, you can use the file system. I'm going to give the location that I created, this particular location that I created for my file system. I'm going to say dbd slash aura data slash aura. This is where I'm going to store my database files such as system sysox undo re redo temp etc omf if you want to use omf you can use omf if you do not want to use it it's your choice click on next fra will configure manually archive archiving will can configure manually if you want to configure it using the dbca that's fine perfectly fine you can use it the listener v19 it says it's down let's start it up on both the nodes to make sure so let's start it on both the nodes. So I'm starting, I cannot start it on this because it's 
So that's done. I'm going to close it and I'll start it on DB2. That's done. So I've started. I don't have to start it on DB1, but that's all good. So click on next. You can see the listener is now up. Click on next. Oracle Vault not required. Label security not required. Click on next. SGA and PGA. I'm going to leave that as default. If you want to change it, you can change it as per your database requirements. Again, these values can be changed at a later point in time. So no harm. Click on next. EM I do not need. I'll be registering my database with EM Cloud Control at a later point in time. So let's uncheck that. Click on next. I'll say use the same password for sys and system user. And what I'll do is I'll give a simple password. The Oracle will say that this password does not conform to Oracle recommended standards because the password is literally password, which is a really simple password. Again, I'm going to get a warning, which I'm going to ignore the reason why the, this particular password can be changed at a later point in time. So no problem create a database and if it will show us a nice summary and if you are okay with everything that has been displayed here if everything looks good then you can click on finish which will start creating the database now the the database creation is going to take some time so what i'll do is while the database is getting created and while the database is getting created let's go to our OEM. So let's launch the browser. You can launch any of your browser of your choice. The Edge, Chrome or Firefox. I use Firefox and that's the that's the EM. So I'm, I'm going to launch into OEM 13C. It's actually 13.5. I'll enter the sysman password, sysman user and sysman password. Log in to my OEM server. And what we need to do is I'll just give you some kind of brief here. So if I go to the host, you can see that apart from the OEM server, there is no other host which is part of the OEM. If I go to the databases, you will be able to see that there are no databases which are configured the OEM. So my OEM is completely it's, it does it does not have any database neither it has got those two hosts so what we need to do is we need to add the first host and the second host so let's go to this gear which is the setup icon so click on that click on add target click on add targets manually so the setup add target add targets manually and use install agent on host because we have not installed the agent on a host so let's do that let's uh, give some session name whatever session name you want to give i'll say add host is man same for all hosts so you'll choose same for all all hosts because you you know you can change you can keep it different but then you'll have to every time for every host you have to specify so i'm saying same for all hosts click on add and say give the first host name which is db1.db.com add that it is a linux x 8664 add the second host which is db2.db.com i don't have to specify the platform because i chose same for all hosts click on next and here give the give the location of your oem server so which is dbi slash oracle slash oem click on the agent install it gets auto populated and i'm going to leave that auto population is auto populated it's fine give the user name this is the oracle user this is not the database user this is the the password of oracle user of the of the uh, server the host so I'm going, I'm going to save this as Oracle and give the root credentials. So root password, password, run privilege, none. And I'm going to save this as root, click OK. So now I've gave the install directory. I gave the install agent install directory oracle root all good click on next this gives a summary that it is going to install on db1 and db2 and it's going to install it at this directory so it gives us all of this summary and if you are okay with all of this click on deploy agent which is going to 
it's going to take some time but what it's going to do is it's going to deploy the agent on db1 and db2 so it's going to do the initialization it's going to do the prerequisite checks and finally it's going to do the agent deployment and if if everything is okay then it's going to it's going to deploy the agent for us and let's look at our database creation our database creation is at 66 percent so now i have i'm running two things in parallel i'm creating the database on the primary and i'm deploying the agent i'm deploying the agent on on both of the hosts so that's the thing that i'm doing what i'm going to do now is i'm going to pause okay so the database creation looks good that's done so that is one good news i'm going to close this i'm i'm going to not i'm not going to do any next activity i can do the next activity but i'm going to pause the video and come back once my agent deployment is completed right now the time is remote validations looks to be good on the server so that's good so now it's going to transfer the agent to this destination host and it's going to do some more checks so while it's doing that i'm going to pause it and come back so the agent deployment is completed on the first host it's completed on the second host which is the good news click on done go to targets go to the hosts and you should be able to see that i've got two hosts db1 and db2 as part of my targets in the oem now if i click on the databases i should be still there are no databases found because all that we have done is we just added the two hosts when we deployed the agent it auto added those two hosts as the target so i don't have to manually add those hosts again so all good so now we have got our oem agent installed on the primary and the standby at this moment what we have done is we have come created our primary database and we have installed the oem agent on both the machines and the oem agent added those two targets as the host targets without the databases so targets are there but there are no databases all good now what i'm going to do next is I'm going to change my database into archive log mode. So that's the next step. So as I mentioned, we only thing that is required on your primary is your database needs to be in archive log mode. And I'm also going to actually change the unique name. So these are these are the few things that I'm going to do. So this is literally a query to show how my database looks like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the SQL developer and I'm going to make a connection to my database. So let's do that. Give the name, whatever name you want to give username. I'm connecting as sys password of the sys user. When you're connecting as sys, select the role as sysdba. Save the password so that it doesn't prompt every time. Give the host name that you want to connect. Give the port number, give the SID, which is Aura, test it, success, save it, connect. And what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this particular query, which will show us some basic parameters for this particular database. So the database name is Aura, unique name is Aura, it's in read write mode, it's no archive log, and force logging is no. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to change the force login to yes, the OEM is going to do it. What I only thing that I'll do is I'll change the unique name to Aura P and the log mode to archive log. Again, you can leave the DB unique name as it is. If you want, it's not mandatory. The DB unique name has to be different on every host. So we can keep this as Aura and change it only on the standby. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to change it to Aura P and I'm going to change the archive log to no archive log to archive log. These are the only two things that I'm going to do. So, and I'm also going to set the FRA for me to set the archive log. So I'm going to do this. So, so let's take these particular steps. And also I'm going to unlock this DBSNMP user. So give me a minute. I'll show you what I'm planning to do. So as I mentioned, the creation of the primary database is completed. And the things that I'm doing now is I'm changing the unique name for the primary database. I'm converting the primary database in archive log mode. I'm unlocking the DBSNP user. So these are the things that I'm doing right now. 
I've already started the listener on both nodes. Deploy of the OEM agent is also completed. I've not done that, which I will do in a minute and add standby using OEM. That will be the last step. So let's, let's get on with this. And for this, I have set this particular script. What I'm going to do is I'm going just going to take this particular script and I'm going to create a small file. So clear. And I can say VI setup primary dot SQL. And I'm going to save that particular file. And I'm going to connect to my database. And before running that particular file, I'll just show you how that what exactly has been done so that you guys know what's being done and you understand that clearly so i'm changing the db unique name that's the first thing i'm changing the recovery dash size to 10 gb and recovery file dash so i'm going to set the fra so these are the two commands to set the fra i'm going to start the database in mount mode i'm going to convert the database to archive block mode and it's going to use the recovery destination or the fra we are going to verify that the database is in the archive mode. I'm going to alter the user. I'm going to unlock this and I'm going to set the password for this user. And I'm going to verify that the unique name is changed using show parameter. And I'm going to verify that the log mode is now is now archive log and the unique name is changed. So this is exactly the same. I, I can comment out this because anyway, this query is going to show me, but that's fine. So now let's quit this that we have we have seen what what I'm going to do. Let me connect to my database. So let's clear SQL plus as sysdba and at setup primary dot SQL. And you can see that system alter, system alter, system alter. So it looks like it has done that. Now it's, it's going to shut down the database, which it has done. Then it's going to open the database in mount mode. Then it's going to convert the database to archive log. So shutdown is completed. Then it opens up in the mount mode. So let's wait for it to do what it's supposed to do. And let's verify that it does everything. Database mounted, database altered. And now if I say archive mode, it is in archive mode. It says use DB recovery test. And if I say the unique name, it is RRP and archive log and force logging is still no. I don't have to set the force logging because, because the, the Oracle is going to do this. So let's capture this data here. I'm going to compare that. I'm going to rerun this particular query so that you understand what I have done. So let me take this and put it here. And you can see that the database was the unique name was Aura. It's now Aura P is still in the read write mode from no archive log to I have changed it to archive log. Force logging is still no, I have not changed it manually. All good. So we have whatever, whatever changes we have to do on the primary that's done. All good. Now is the magic. Now the, I've done four steps and I also unlocked this DBS and MP user. So if you saw the script, I unlocked it and I set the password for that user because I do not know the default password. Now I'm going to start listener. That's already done. Deploy OEM agent. That's already done. Discover Oracle home. That's the step that we are going to do now. And then once Oracle home is discovered, we are going to add the standby database using OEM. So let's go to our OEM once again. Let's click on the setup. Let's click on the add targets, click on add targets manually. And now instead of using install agent on host, we will say add using guided process. So we are going to use the second option and we'll choose Oracle database, listener and ASM. So this is this option is what we are going to choose. Click on add, click on this search button and then click on the first host select it, and then click on next, let it discover what's running on my first host DB1. And it has identified that there is a database. So click on that particular database, give the password for DBS and MP user and the rest all can remain the same. And 
also select the listener and click on next and if you are okay with whatever is displayed click on save which is going to save those two targets in the oem which is done good now if i click on the targets go to the database you can see that i got orapi which is, is still discovering so let's that's fine now click on the setup again click on the add targets click on the add targets manually again use the add using guided process select oracle database listener and automatic storage management click on add this time select the second host so click on the second host select it click on next and it it does not have any database but it has got this listener so that select that listener click on next click on save the listener will be saved click on this close and now if i click on the targets i have the rp database and the oracle home on the second instance should be registered so now i've completed discovered oracle home in oem and i'm now going to go to this particular step which is add standby database using oem so let's click on or rp so what i've done is click on the targets click on the databases click on the primary database for which you want to add the standby so click on that click on the availability and here under the availability you will find an option called add standby database so let's click on that give the sys user and since we are using the sys user give the sys dba click on login and it's 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 going to do some kind of test so give it a minute and then it gives us this option create a new physical standby choose this particular option click on continue online backup use rman there are other options but we will stick to use rman to copy database files click on next degree of parallelism based on how many cpus you have got let's let me put four and use oracle manage for standby read logs if you want to use omf you can use it if you don't want to use it you can use uncheck this so it's going to and if you want to rename your you if you want to rename your you can rename them as per your needs so you can say redo or you can say standby redo let's say 05.log so you can give something like this or you can leave them default it's your choice what you want to do i am just going to create i'm just going to change it again it's not mandatory and that's done five six seven eight that's all good click on next and where you want your standby so standby database attributes instance name will be the same if you had asm you can choose asm i'm going to stick to file system host i'm going to click on this search button select the second host db2 select it that's all good the this is all good standby host credentials all good click on next and if you want to use ofa architecture or if you want to keep file names and location same as primary database i'll choose the same because i want to make sure that my primary and standby data files or everything matches so i'll choose the second option it has chosen the listener the default listener the only listener which is available so it has if it had multiple listeners it would have shown you so you can pick whichever listener you want click on next i'm going to ignore this particular warning click on continue it suggests an unique name as aura p1 i'm going to change it to aura s again you can you, you can change it to whatever you want standby did archive location i'm going to give the same location as my fra so wherever i stored the fra i'm going to store it automatically i'm going to leave that use data guard broker that's fine connect identifiers if you want to change it you can change it so i'll say use existing net i'm going to copy that i'm going to put it here and i'm going to change this to db2 and here i'll change it to ris that's all good click on next and i'm going to ignore this and i'm going to say continue 
now you will you want to review so aura p is on the primary aura s is on the standby it's oracle 19c this is the oracle home exactly same oracle home my primary is running on db1 my standby is running on db2 i'm going to use the new backup using the rman duplicate and it's going to be a physical standby so if everything looks good if everything is as per your inputs or requirements if you have confident that this is all good then click on the finish and it says the standby database job creation job has submitted now if i go to my second box if i run ps minus ef grep pmon i should i do not have any pmon process but wait for few seconds wait for few seconds a aura process will appear on the standby the the aura process will appear and the database creation will start now what i'll do is in the meantime i'm going to i'm going to launch one more secondary session and i'm going to just make it a little big a little bit bigger and what i'll do is in the sql developer i'll run one query select value from v dollar diac info to get the location of my alert log so let's take this and it's trace so let's go to that particular location only thing that you need to do is change the aura p to aura s click ls minus l search for alert file which is alert log and just clear this and do tail minus f so just follow that particular file and you can see that in the background it has started and now if i run this you can see an aura process pimon aura process has started and and you can see that it's the it's setting up the data guard now i will i will just let you know that when you when you use the oem i mentioned this before but let me mention this again you no need to manually restore the database the oem is going to do that no need to set up the data guard parameters such as dg config file client file ser server no need to start mrp process manually because oem does it switch over can be done using oem no need to add standby read logs you saw that oem added them no need to configure the listener or dns names dot aura no need to configure data guard broker oem will configure it and no need to configure the force logging so all of this will be taken care of by oem now let's this while it's doing this let's go to the primary and let's see if it has actually configured the the data guard broker session so let's do that so let me connect to the primary once again clear the screen and launch the dgmgrl and let's say show configuration let's see if it has added sorry there was a sp spelling mistake show configuration and you can see aura p it has created a data guard broker aura p is the primary aura s is the physical standby which is not at enabled because it's doing that in the background it's doing that in the background so wh while it does it i'm going to pause the video and come back once it has done its activity right now the time in my watch is 128 and i should be back by maybe four minutes it's going to take maybe four to five minutes so 132 is what i'm expecting to come back i thought i'll come back by 131 132 but it has taken some time so right now it's 133 and it has taken one one or two extra minutes which is still fine so now what i'll do is i'll i'll go to my sql developer and i'll set up the connection for the aura s so let me click on this and change some parameters so this all looks good and instead of connecting to db1 i'm going to connect to db2 test the connection all good save it and say connect and let's run exactly same query but before doing that what i'll do is i will run this particular query and now you should see that the the force logging is set to yes you can see at the force logging this is set to yes and i did not set it the oem did it for us 
So the OEM configured the forced logging for us. And now if I run this little query, you should be able to see that the database is not open. It's not open. The database is in the mounted mode. Now there are two ways to fix it. You can either, the, either go manually into SQL plus and say alter database open. So you can open it or you can use the OEM to do that. So let's click on, on the, click on the, uh, this, whatever this button is, click on databases and you can see, okay, for some reason it has not identified that Aura S is up, which is still fine. But if I, if I now say show configuration, if I say show configuration, then you can see that my, this Aura S physical shared by database, the member was not enabled at, now it says that I've got Aura PS primary and Aura S. And remember, I did not create this data guard broker. The OEM did it for us. So OEM not only did, not only did the setup of the standby, it also configured the data guard broker. And not only that, it added the standby, it added the standby into the targets of my OEM. So a lot of things it has done, which is a good thing. I don't have to discover the Aura S because the OEM has done it for us. Now, go to Aura P, sorry, uh, yeah, that's fine. Go to Aura P, Ash Standby Database. Let's cancel this. And you can see that we have got this Aura S. Click on this normal icon, click on this normal icon. And what you can do here is you can say enable real-time query so that it opens up. Again, you can do that using the you can you do that using alter database open that also works but i just wanted to show you how to enable the database in read only up with apply so let's look at our database again and now from the mounted it says read only with apply so now it is active data guard which means we will be able to read the transactions on our primary now it's time to do some testing so before doing some testing i want to i want to put a point here is like the when the data guard when you when in the connect identifier it does not get set properly so you might have to do some kind of settings there so what i'll do is let me exit from here clear and go to dgm grl and let's say validate static connector connect identifier for all and you can see that it creates this it creates this entry and it says, it gives us this warning, TNS listener does not currently know of service requested in connect this descriptor. It works fine for the standby, it does it perfectly, but for the primary, it gives us this particular warning. So what we will be doing is like, we'll be capturing this entry, we'll be capturing what kind of, what is the static identifier that it's using. And then we will use, we will try to create and similar entry and to do that what we can do is we know that it works on the standby so let's let's look at our file on the standby which is here so cat this and you can see that it has added this it has added this entry so take a note of this entry on the standby where it works fine change the aura s to aura p because our primary service name is aura p so take it and take the same location on the primary so exit vi and add the newly edited entry for the aura p into our listener that's all good and it's time to stop and start our listener because whatever changes that we do on the listener they need to be replicated which is all done now we have done whatever needs to be done so what i will do is like we'll do some kind of testing so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a table on the primary so before doing taking creating the table i'll just show you that this particular table does not exist on primary and it does not exist on the standby if it doesn't exist on the primary it should not exist on the standby so which is good the table or view does not exist now i'm going to create that particular table insert two records and I'm going to alter the checkpoint and switch log file and archive log current. I'm going to do all of that and that's done. And if I now come to the standby, table or view does not exist. Let's verify and it all good. 
now what i could have also done is i could have run this particular query which tells me which tells me how my data guard looks like and what is the current sequence etc etc so if i go to the primary and if i run this particular query let's let me run this particular query and it's this should say that my role is primary and switch over status to standby which is all good and if i run the same query on my standby then it should it will say this particular query will say that i am standby read only with apply and the switch over is not allowed so i'm physical standby switch over is not allowed read only with apply and i can i can see that from availability and add standby cancel this i should get the data guard administration which i don't get but i'll get it at a later point in time so you can see aura as is physical standby so all good so we have seen we have seen that the 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 configuration is successfully added we have also seen that whatever changes that we did on the primary that have got replicated so the standby is added you can now stop and go ahead and set it up but you still want to hang on for some more time you can because what i'm going to do now is i'm going to show you the switch over using the using the oem so you can you can actually if you want to do the switch over what you can do let me clear this and what you can do is you can say switch over to so you can use the data guard broker or you can use the oem and you will say switch over so i'm going to say switch over and click on continue and this is all good click on continue and are you sure you want to switch over to all yes yes i want to click on yes and it's going to initiate the role change then it's going to restart the new standby waiting for switch over to complete while it's doing that let's let's uh, keep a note of how our configuration i think i've lost it but that's fine i think i can i can just show it to you from here so this aura s was physical standby so i'm going to capture this here and aura p was primary so i'm going to capture it here and let's give it a minute let's run the query let's see if it has opened up so click on and you can see now aura s is primary failed destination because as of now as of now the standby the primary because it first switches the role then it starts the new standby then wait for the switch over to complete so it's it's done the first step and let's look at let's try to see if this is open and this should be now physical standby so you can see the aura p is and it says recovery needed so give it a minute for the recovery needed to complete so it's still doing it in the background and finally once the complete switch over is done it will say that the switch over status is uh not allowed and it will be read only with apply so that's how it will look like so give it a minute and you can see switch over status not allowed read only with apply and here failed destination should no longer be failed destination so if i run this you can see that now it looks something like this so primary and two standby and it's in the read write mode so all good so the switch over is also complete now what we are going to do is we are going to insert few more records on the new primary or old standby just to verify that all looks good so i'm going to delete whatever records are there in the table i'm going to delete them and oh let's let's not delete them let's add two more records so total number of records are four so let's do that so first let me before running that i'm going to show you that there are two records on the new primary there are two records on the old primary or the new standby and from the new primary aura s from the aura s from the aura s i'm going to run i'm going to run this too so i can i can show you that there are four records now and you can see that there are four records let's go to the old primary and verify that you got and you got the the four records on the new standby old primary all good then and if i click on the availability as standby 
cancel this you can see now the aura p is physical standby all good so that's all done and if you want to do one more switch over it should work fine so if you want to bring it back you can initiate one more switch over or if you want to do the switch over using the data guard you can do that so let's exit from the data guard because when we connect it so let's clear let's say dgm grl so let's actually do this on the new standby so let's clear this connect to this show configuration and you can use if you want you can use the data guard broker switch over to and i'm going to say orapi in quotes i'm going to give this and let's see whether i'm able to do this switch over so i'm i can use the i can use the oem to do the switch over or i can use the data guard broker to do the switch over and who did who set the data guard broker did i set the data guard broker no it was not me who set the data guard broker it was the oem which has set the data guard broker so you can imagine the amount of work that that oem does to set up the data guard and it's really fabulous it makes life of dba easy because no need to restore no need to worry about the listener configuration no need to worry about the tns configuration no need to worry about the parameters such as log archive config the digi config file server file client etc etc and no need to set up the data guard manually the switch over is succeeded new primary is or rp looks good so now if i go to availability as standby cancel this and if i show you that aura p should be my new pri primary and aura s should be and you can see it it's just just give it a minute data guard broker is not at available this is this is fine it's it's less than one second so give it a minute for it to get refreshed which will get refreshed in a second and all good apply like this all warnings will go away and finally when all of this warning aura p is now new primary aura s is all standby it's just catching up and when all is done we should see all of these warnings gone away so let's give it a minute let's try one more time and if if it takes a lot of time what you can what potentially do exit clear show configuration let's see what the data guard broker is saying and apply lock could not be found enable configuration give it a give it a refresh exit clear show configuration and it's 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 taking a bit of time which should go away so what i'll do is i'll i'll not waste your time it's 146 i'll pause the video and come back once it is done you can keep a note on the watch so that you know it's it's something that it, it should just work i i it just takes a bit of time so I'm, I'm going to pause it the video and come back once it is done i'm not going to waste your time and in fact i came back within few seconds because it's done show configuration shows physical standby 147 it's done and now if i click on availability as standby cancel and you should be able to see all is normal everything is normal and it's we are back to where we were aura p is our primary aura s is our standby so all looks good so with that i'm going to end this particular tutorial in this particular tutorial we saw how to add the how to configure the data guard using oem we learned a lot not only we created the database so i'm, I'm going to just i'm just going to tell you what all we did so if i look at the steps that we did is we created the primary we changed the unique name we converted the primary into archive log we deployed the oem agent we discovered the oracle home in oem we added the standby we did the testing and we did the switch over and all of this was done in this particular tutorial i hope you uh, will be able to set up the data guard in your environment or in your personal lab using the oem if it is required and again i would repeat setting of the data guard in using oem is really really easy 
Thank you for watching and see you in next tutorial. And if you do like the content that I'm uploading, and if you do like the channel, please subscribe to my channel and please hit the like button. Thank you for watching and see you in next tutorial. Bye-bye.